You'll never forget, Tommy, or what happened on that strange Halloween night. Even though it's been 20 years, it seems like just yesterday. Most of my childhood memories have faded away with the strands of time, but not this one. How could it? You don't forget seeing your best friend torn apart limb by limb, scream by scream. It was a night a lot like this one, very eerie. A full moon on Halloween is said to be extremely rare. I was in my room and had just pulled on my new prized possession from the store bag. It was the mask of Pennywise the Clown from the movie It. I saved up all summer long from all the lawn mowing jobs I could find. That summer was hot. Sweat your balls off hot. It was so hot that the pond woods used to go swimming in down by the river was all dried up. Anyway, believe me, it was just too hot. Just as I went to the mirror to see if the mask would fit, there was a knock at the door. My best friend Tommy, I just knew it. Even though trick-or-treating was in high gear, my feelings were substantiated when I heard a loud voice say, Hey, you little bastard, where's your brother? Now, my brother John, he could be a little pain in the butt. He responded as he always did. F you, Tommy. Tommy laughed and clomped up the stairs. My house was old. We're talking dinosaur days old. My parents hated when we stomped up the stairs, but they never seemed to care when Tommy did it. He just had a way with people. My parents loved him. Hell, everyone loved him. Who doesn't love the captain on the football team? Oh yeah, and the head choir boy. Not to mention his family was the richest in town. They lived up at the Weatherby Mansion up on Nobbler's Gulch. Yes, I guess to the outside eye, Tommy had it all. But I knew better. I knew what others didn't. Tommy was no ordinary boy. Tommy was special. I hurried to put my mask on in an effort to scare Tommy, but all that happened was my hair got caught in elastic things they used to make masks with back in the day. As I turned around, there he stood, grinning at me as he said, Looks great, Meathead. Meathead, what a stupid name. To everyone else, I was just Joe. You know, your average Joe. Nothing special, but to Tommy Meathead. He seemed to say with love in some kind of weird jacked up way, which made it all right. And Tommy was 6'2 and weighed a solid 210. He was not someone you'd want to mess with in a dark alleyway, believe me. Me? Oh, I was still growing into my body, as my mom liked to say. It was her special way of letting me off the hook for being 5'2 and 105 pounds in junior high. And yes, I guess I did have a big head for my age. Anticipation swelled as Tommy turned toward the door and yelled, Off we go a plundering! Then clonk, clonk, clonk down the stairs. I quickly ran after him, excited as only a kid could be. Of course, as I started down the stairs, my mother yelled from the kitchen, now, Joe, don't clonk down the stairs! I'd let it go this time, only this time, because man, it was time for trick or treat. Right as Tommy slammed the door open, my father came bursting in. Oh, hiya boys, he said as he went gliding by. Hi pops, I said in return. Now you boys be careful out there tonight, don't get bitten by a werewolf. It's a full moon, you know, he shouted from the kitchen. All right pops, we'll try not to. I shouted back. Good evening to you fine folks, Tommy yelled as we left. I nudged him and said, Kissing up again, smartass? He just smiled. As we made our way to the porch, we realized what we were up against. There must have been a million kids out that night. Oh crap, I shouted. I forgot my frickin' bag. As I turned around to run back to the door, I saw it. Just for a flash, next to the half-dead pine tree in the backyard. There stood a tall figure with yellow glowing eyes. I closed my eyes as if to make it disappear. It worked. As I opened my eyes again, whatever it was, was gone. After retrieving my bag, we were on our way. My street was just like any other street in small town button down Indiana. 
population of 5,000 and a giant abandoned mill on the outskirts of town. I like to think of good old BD as a modern day Mayor Mayberry with a two man police department and one church smack dab in the middle. Those were innocent days. An innocence that would forever be forgotten after that fateful night under a blood red moon.